like girls trip, Target. <laughs> Ooh, girls trip. I miss going yeah. to the grocery store. I haven't been to the grocery store in like three years. That's I um, took a virtual so freaking Universal Studios today, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I went on three roller coasters. But that is one thing yeah. that I am grateful for is the, um, it, it was the motivation to start this. And I'm so excited. Um, I'm from One Leg Up Productions, Molly and Aaron are with Claiming Disability Inc. And we have partnered together to bring this community to all of you digitally. And at two o'clock this afternoon, the copies arrived at my house and they're sitting in a box at my desk. Yes! 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 And Honestly, it's such a good feeling to know that something that I wrote is in my arms. Such an yeah. exhilarating feeling to know that you've done something to change the world. So, in the past recent weeks, a lot of great things have been happening. I've been connected with Kelly's Choice Organization, and they're relaunching my radio show in the next week or so. And it's going to be yeah. called Stomping on CP with Positive Thoughts. I also launched my group with the Mighty called uh, Our Disability, Our Cerebral Palsy Journey. So for those of you that are on the Mighty and want to join that uh, specific group, basically it talks about empowerment while going through our journeys with cerebral palsy. So yeah. that's all I've been excited for and the fact that I'm continuing to publish articles and Get more we have our Crip Chat Club, which is what this is, what you're all a part of. We now have merchandise. So we've got um, t shirts and sweatshirts and leggings and tote bags and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, one of the things that I would like to tell first is yeah. the, the video. There are two videos I made oh. for the self advocates. He and I was, he and I were one is that I'm also working on teaching young people on safer on safer because the other thing I would like to talk about is that is is that a lot of people who don't know people with disability and most of the people which which I'm teaching them about disability, so how that impacts impact the life of people and how we can get together to know how the impact of people with disabilities is. I was able to take part in the Real Ability Film Festival closing ceremonies, which was so awesome because I switched it all to virtual when all this stuff happened with COVID-19, which I think I don't know, I was so proud of them for being able to do that. And I got to see Judy Human speak. And one of the things that I love that she said is, we need to share our stories and not be embarrassed yeah, about in them. In these times, we have to celebrate the micro wins, even if you think it's small. Today is about coping strategy. How are you coping? with what's going on. I see Ty Leo with her hand up. Go, girl, go. The way right? I've been coping with the way things have been going with me lately, my body with my CP is advocating, writing, sharing my story through the outlets that we have. Like That's how I've been coping and talking to you guys every week. I was very happy that, that suddenly the biggest news on Google is that there's criticism of these triage rules, not that the triage rules are out there. So I suspect we're probably safer now than we were before people started using, using the internet to publicize these really big shows. That's uh, one of the things Judy, I <laughs> to keep going back to Judy, but that was one of the things she was like saying in this time during the COVID-19, we have to be really vigilant to make sure that disabled people weren't being sidelined over other people. And that's, you know, that's a perfect example of that is 
you know, putting them on a lower priority because they're disabled. Health care should be a human right. Hey, and our life is worth something. We need to be here. Our voices are important. So what you guys are doing right now in this room is critical. And I'm hoping that this entire situation is going to shine a light on a lot of disparities that are happening um, within all of our systems, but especially the healthcare system. And hopefully this will be the Kickstarter or the catalyst to maybe rethinking some of our systems. If you know that consuming all of that um, news is not good for you, I think it's okay to know that and put that as a boundary for yourself. Um, that I think it's important that, you know, like, Ron, thank you for being in touch with the news because I am not. And and to know yeah. that this is now being highlighted in the news is important. So thank you because I'm not a news reader or watcher. Thank you for bringing it to my attention that now we can maybe have effective change on the current language that's in policies. Um, so you think when you're going into a medical type situation, you won't really have to be advocating for yourself, but it's just not medical, true. The medical institutions are biased against disabilities in the first place. Where we represent the failures of the medical institutions. People are facing still a system, a system's paternalistic attitude towards people with disabilities. That's, it's ingrained in the population, it's ingrained in the institutions, it's ingrained in the school systems. And we're still fighting that even with the progress we've made advancing disability causes. So, I mean, that's what we're still facing and we just have to keep working at chipping away at that, that we don't have to have, we don't have to take what people are gonna dish out for us. One good thing, just on a positive note, I found with, with now that we have the social media is um, I can't, I never could visit a lot of my friends' homes and now they can't either. <laughs> so I feel there's a little bit more equality. I try to just share, you know, like I, I was like, oh, do you have an hour and 45 minutes to go watch this movie about Crip Camp? This movie on, like, awesome. So I just try to be more positive to people and my friends call me and I, I just kind of try, I, that's what I'm trying to do. So I had a really crappy experience. Um, I talked to Aaron about it. Um, since you can't really go out and meet people, <laughs> and since I'm like young and single, and um, there's a dating site that I'm on, and this guy actually rejected me because I'm an amputee. Oh man, that's awful. Yeah. Well, I know that. I'm like, he probably has a small dick, so I mean, it <laughs> all like. <laughs> they just came from disabled women, y'all. <laughs> exactly. It, it really yeah, sucks prejudice because I against never... small bits. <laughs> so funny. I, I'm not getting into that, Ron. But... <laughs> Aaron's over here dick shaming now. <laughs> I just, I've never, I've never had anything like that happen to me before. I mean, I've only been an amputee for. A little over two years. I mean, I guess it was bound to happen sooner or later. Um, well, Jessica, uh, all I'm going to say is welcome to the club. You know, you are not alone, Solidarity Sister. But mm -hmm. I had a guy say to me, Well, you're hot, but your chair is a boner killer. So, uh, you know, it happens. There are awful people. Yeah, virtual hug to you. And something that I try to remember. Whenever I feel like I've been dismissed or rejected, rejection is redirection. And I know that to some people that might sound really corny, but it is 100% the truth that if something is not meant for you, you need to let it go. And the things that are meant for you, 100% will come to you. And the same is for relationships and people. No matter what you do, the love comes along with people you are with in the moment. You have to find someone you can work with and when you have children and a disability, all these life things, you have to find a person that will navigate with you, not, you know, not for what they want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So, a person 
who knows what they wanted from you, but it obviously wasn't what you wanted. Once I stopped using dating apps, I was able to actually curate relationships, romantic relationships, away from the virtual space. My past two girlfriends I've had, um, it started off with just a regular ass conversation. It didn't start off as, oh, um, let's try to start dating. You just start happening to find that you have uh, similarities and similarities and interests, and then it just you know develops, right? So it becomes a lot easier to uh, to accept the person as who they are and to see who them for who they are, rather than looking at dating apps and saying, okay, well this person hits all these check marks. Time it starts with that confidence piece of being being like, hey, this is who I am. You know, I need, yeah. I need to interject something. This is my fifty first wedding anniversary. Oh, not, not meaning not meaning to brag. Oh, my wife's friend. Today is your fifty first wedding anniversary? Today. And you're yes. spending time with us? Yeah, I thought I'd be in love with you. <laughs> thank you. Well tell tell her thank you for giving some of her time to us. So I will. Yeah. I hope you How how many people here are playing games? Me. Solitaire, um, The Walking Dead has been my video game. But when I need a chill day, turn on that Xbox. And when I am not busy working, I'm watching a lot of Netflix. Um, I've been outside on my balcony getting some natural vitamin D and listening to audiobooks. But I've been reading Jane Austen's collection again because I'm nice. like, I'm like super oh, smart. Very classy. <laughs> nice. Jane Austen. I like wow. them. I've been reading Moby <laughs> Dick. Sam is shaking his <laughs> He's like, uh oh. yeah. and well, Jane. It's not about pride and prejudice. Sam and I have another book. Never. Like, I am I am a hundred percent anti classic literature. <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty universal. I mean, there's people that love to read, there's people that hate to read, and there's people that love to read what they like to read. And I'm that last category. I like to read what I like to read. Uh, I'm a nerd, so I would say uh, any type of sci-fi book. But my favorite two uh, writers up to date, the probably the most I've ever read was Michael Crichton. Mm, okay. I've probably read more of his books than any other. And then the second would be uh, Bradbury. Okay. Bradbury. Yeah. Bradbury. That's classic. No, yeah. that's not classic. He's not classic. He's like not, he's, he's sci-fi. Yeah, classic sci-fi. Classic is classic is boring and plain. Oh, oh my goodness, film. This is also by Kristen Hanna. It's called The Great Alone, and I read it in like three weeks. I've never read a book in three weeks before. Stranger in a Strange Land? Stranger in a Strange Land. I will add it to the list. In the chat, I want you to write your favorite movie. Okay, we got Top Gun. We got Wedding Singer. Rushmore. Urban Cowboy. Crip Camp. That's good. Firewall. Bridget Jones. Oh. Yeah, Bridget Jones villain. It's based on Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tai Chi Max. I've never heard of that one. That definitely is. The, I don't know. Is that mainstream? Keanu Reeves directed it and/or produced it and was a major. Uh, I don't want to give anything away because it was really awesome. awesome. Man of Tai Chi. Man of tai Chi. You could. Yeah. I'm gonna look that up because. I heart Keanu Reeves. So <laughs> we have the, the Treasure of Sierra Madre, Goodfellas, A Walk to Remember, and I Am Legend, some Will Smith in the house. Okay. What is everybody doing for self care? Yeah, so Ty so, says listening to music, take a break when needed. That's super important. Yes, understanding yep. our limits and knowing when we need to take a chill hour. So I had to find a way to exercise really made me feel yeah. 
<laughs> in clothes. I was so upset. I was like, no. But then I had to get over it. But I actually went on YouTube and found some like cardio exercises for disability so Chris, vitamin, vitamin D strolls. Yeah, getting in touch with nature, getting outside, breathing fresh air. Sam has a garage gym. Denise says foot exercises max. max. Making lots of space. I'm making lots of space for believing in myself, expressing myself, saying what I need to say, never bottling things up. Full body creative expression and truth telling. That is so beautiful, Max. Thank you so much for putting that there. Yes. Um, there is, uh, yeah, self-care doesn't always have to look like doing something. It could just be being present in the moment and allowing yourself to feel the feeling, <laughs> making space for that. Um, uh, the vape pens. <laughs> I also vape pens. Yeah. <laughs> so exercise and then the THC vape pens. Maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, Got Jessica, it. bath bombs. Uh, we talked about creativity and how important that part of us is to get tapped into this time yeah. what are you creating what, what what is your expression of creativity of choice well, well, i'm making easter cards and like for pe my friends that have birthdays birthday cards and stuff okay. i have been animating on my adobe software um beside <laughs> writing i like to animate and draw characters i've been taking these old photographs and messing with them in Photoshop to make them look stencilized and then I take it on my iPad and I take this Apple pen like make it more Very graphic. cool. I and others internationally um, are working with a platform called Intuitive Public Radio which is a public health art and advocacy project for amplifying and assisting survivors of severity, disability, and hardship. I am always looking for creators to collaborate with. I make music, audio, art, and write also. So every time someone says, I make this, or, or I make this kind of music, or I make this kind of art, or I like to do this kind of project out in public, I'm always really interested in those things. I'm so glad to have connected with all of you, because as, uh, is your name Pauline? Yeah. yeah I, as you said, you don't. I don't really have any disabled friends either. All my friends are able-bodied, so it's really so awesome to connect with other people you know, that understand and get it. So yep. I'm really. Yeah. This was a really great experience. Thanks so much. First of all, I would just like to thank you, thank you all for amazing talk because we all we, we are all different. We all have different disabilities. And, and we all want to be hard, we all want to do it to do it, help our community. I'm done, I just wanted to say thanks and see you next week. Aww, thank you, Ryan. We love you guys. How fun. Thank you guys. Happy anniversary. Everybody. See you next week. Bye, Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye.